And as our meditation comes to a close, gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your bodies. And as you feel ready, open your eyes. Welcome to those who have joined us while we were in meditation. We are so glad that you are here, virtually or in person. Sam Krieger and our lovely Mary Highland, our guest soloist for the evening, are going to lead us in our opening chant. God is in this place, the God that created anything and everything and all of us and all things. I know that God is everywhere present, loving and guiding and talking to us in its own unique way. And I know that we are here this evening to hear the message from Reverend Sidney, that this is a special evening of prayer dedicated to remembrance and the joys and I know that right here and right now that I am a creation of God and that I have many memories, many joys, lots of things to remember. And I invite each and every one of us to just remember and be happy and let our lives overflow with joy as this service this evening is truly a service of joy and recollection and happiness and remembering of who we are that we are all truly children of God here on purpose and for purpose. And I know that Reverend Sidney guides us through our service and we are supported by our musicians, Sam and Mary, and all our teams in Facebook and on Zoom at church and at home, that this service just unfolds flawlessly. And we are all open and hear the exact message that we need to hear. And it is truly a blessing as we are a blessing to life. I know this is so for me. I know this is so for each and every person here. And I release this prayer into the law of mine, knowing it is already done. And with a grateful heart, I simply say, Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. My Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. to the world. 
so still in the night then in the east shone a heavenly light join in the chorus the angels sang glory to God to the new Thank you so much. All right, so I bet you're wondering, how is this gonna work? Some of you probably have mementos or pictures for our altar, and I want to tell you, go ahead and bring them up now as we are beginning this process. You probably also, uh, I hope you all have um, cards that were in your programs, which I will guide you through that process a little later. You're gonna do a little writing and then we're gonna set the place on fire. No, we're going to light some candles, and we will light candles in the name of those people, those ideas, those things that you might be grieving or still thinking about and carrying with you as we move into this holiday season. So, like I said, feel free if you've got a picture or something or a memento, you wanna put it up here on our altar. I've, there's some wonderful things up here. Um, You'll see my, my dog, Hector, who is in a frame and it says, thanks for everything, I had a wonderful time. <laughs> and there's, so there are some wonderful, really, really beautiful tributes here. And it's, so this idea of a remembrance service or a blue service is not a, a, a strange idea. Many, many churches, many synagogues, many different spiritual paths often will create a blue service so that as we move into the holiday season, and we'll do it at the, these all centers, will do it at the beginning of the season so that you can begin to give context to you what you may have had to lose this year, what you have released, maybe people, an experience, a job, a way of believing, a relationship. Because our, our challenge is finding joy in the midst of grief. We seem pretty good at finding grief in the midst of joy, but is it possible to cultivate without feeling guilty the possibility of joy in the midst of grief? So we are right at the beginning of this light season, the season of light. Um, in fact, 
Sunday night was the first night of Hanukkah, which is that festival of lights or the festival for light. And I've actually, I've asked Sam to come up and help me as we begin this service because um, he's going to light the menorah or at least full light. Come on up. Um, and he's going to do the prayer, the Hanukkah blessing. And some of you might be members of the tribe of Israel, so you know the prayer and you are welcome to join him. And, and I don't know the prayer, so I'm, I'm going to be jealous. I'm going to have Jewish envy. Oh, uh, okay. But come on over here. Join the club. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Later, we're going to play jump rope with the long cable on the mic. Gosh, you guys are really not laughing tonight. I guess I need some better material. All right. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, asher kidishanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu, lohedlik ner shel Hanukkah. Blessed are you, our God, ruler of the universe, who makes us holy through your commandments and commands us to kindle the Hanukkah lights. Thank you. I appreciate that. That was beautifully done. So... This season of light, it's really interesting because a path, across many paths, you're going to see that this is a season of light. Hanukkah, as we have talked about, Christmas symbolizes the bringer of light, the birth of light. We celebrate it here not as, the, the, um, as Jesus, a Savior, or the Savior, but we celebrate the idea of that birth of light within ourselves, the rebirth of light, the renowing of who we are as divine beings, of Christed beings. And so we celebrate that in our metaphysical way so that we can always look at the, the sacred part of us that is seeking to come forth, that wants to come forth and shine a light of possibility, of new ideas, of creativity, of, of whatever that might look like for you on your path. Kwanzaa is about bringing light and understanding to family, to community, and to culture. So, you know, we have this, um, we have collective ideas in, in, across the population of light in the midst of darkness, and we know about this eternal light of divine life, which never dims despite the end of one's human or earthly life. And so tonight, the idea is that we want to honor that. We want to honor that. You know, it's so much easier to, as I said earlier, find joy in the midst of grief if we can do it without carrying any residual pain, residual guilt, res residual regret about anything that we might have surrendered over this last year or the last 10 years, whatever it is for you. So the idea is that we consciously grieve, we consciously mourn so that we begin to have room once again for joy. We want to have room for possibility, room for joy, room for, room for life. Ernest Holmes wrote that light has the power to overcome darkness, not by combating darkness, but by, by, but by being exactly what it is, light. Being exactly what it is. You and I are here to be exactly who we are, to be exactly what we are, light. We are that light. But the journey, we pick up a lot of dust on the journey, and some of you may not be feeling so light-filled. You may not be feeling so shiny. And especially the last two years, it's almost two years, there have been a lot of challenges to remembering light. There's been a lot of challenges to that. Ernest also wrote this, there's something divine about us which we have overlooked. There is more to us than we realize. Man is an eternal destiny, a forever expanding principle of conscious intelligence. The ocean and the drop of water, the sun and its rays. Man, the real man, is birthless, deathless, changeless. And God as man, in man, is man. And of course this means woman, of course, right? We were talking about humanity. The highest God and the innermost God is one and the same God. And so we prepare not to die, but to live. But you might find that if there are losses that are still pulling at your heart, it's hard to prepare to live. It's hard to prepare to live. It might be easier to be kind of numb and prepare to die or just to step back from all of those things that perhaps once brought you joy. 
I know that when I honor a loss, I'm more free to live. I'm a lot more free to live. Um, the paradox is that in celebrating what has changed form, then step by step, inch by inch, I do prepare to live. And I live more fully with a greater willingness to let my light shine again. And it's all about that willingness. Can we be willing? Can we be willing to find joy in the midst of grief, joy in the midst of challenge, joy in the midst of struggle, joy in the midst of release, joy in the midst of growth? Um, it can be hard to move into a season of light if you're carrying your personal darkness when you're grieving the loss of someone or something you have loved. So we want to recognize the challenge. We want to recognize the pain of release and letting go. That is what we are here to do intentionally. And if we can move into the holidays without carrying residual pain, without carrying residual grief, or at least being so conscious of it that we honor it, that we create a bigger space around us, we create a bigger tenderness around all of that, then we will absolutely be able to move into this, this place of not just celebrating, but of loving, of loving ourselves, loving each other. You know, it's interesting, this idea of processing and honoring grief. We don't do a very good job of it in this country. Um, we don't tend to dive into the grieving process. And yet, if you had been raised Jewish or you grew up in Israel or in a Jewish home, you'd be used to the idea of when someone dies of having seven days of mourning. Seven days of intentional mourning, covering mirrors so that you are not led into thinking about yourself, but that you are led back into thinking about the person you have lost and all of the memories around that. That's the intention. You know, Kaddish is the Aramaic word for sanctification, sanctification of God. And a Kaddish, or a prayer, is spoken at synagogue as part of regular services. It's also a prayer spoken for the dead. So there's a poem that I often read when I do memorials or life celebrations. And it's from a contemporary poet by the name of Merritt Malloy. And this poem was written for the purpose of preparation for the Kaddish for the dead. It's called Epitaph. When I die, give what's left of me away. Give to children and old men that wait to die. And if you need to cry, cry for your brother walking the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them what you need to give me. I want to leave you something, something better than words or sounds. Look for me and the people I've known or loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live in your eyes and not your mind. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands, by letting bodies touch bodies, and by letting go of children that need to be free. Because love doesn't die, people do. So when all that's left of me is love, give me away. Give me away. So is it okay to be sad? Is it okay to be sad longer than other people think you should be? You know, a lot of people tell you, you should be over this by now. You know, you, you've got something going on here. You really, really should stop being so sad. <sighs> really? Really? You know, there are a lot of things to, to look at and to be conscious about. When my husband and I moved back to L.A. in August, um, we had lots and lots of joy and delight. But at the same time, there was a lot of letting go. Um, we have both talked a lot over the last couple of months about the paradox of feeling both joy and sadness because we left friends in a community where we had been for over 17 years. We'd been active and happy there. You know, you don't have to leave a situation just because it's no longer working. We, were, we left in, in happiness and in wholeness. Our identities have shifted. Our family has changed. We are really empty nesters now. That's a big thing. There are times, I got to say, I don't like it. I really don't like it. Yet at the same time, I love that, that I get to create a new life, that we get to create a new life. And I love that, that our son is living on his own and is being independent and walking his path. Yet I'm really sad that he's like 1,100 miles away. But I'm thrilled that he's moving into his own awareness. So, you know, it's, 
life isn't binary. It's not either or. It seems like it's so many shades of, of gray and every other color that we get to carry all of these things at the same time. You know, whether or not society thinks it's normal or not. You know, we, we lose things and we have to say goodbye to things. A lot of people don't understand. Is it okay? What about the loss of a pet? Some people don't understand. How can you be so sad? It was just your dog. Really? Really? A family member. And not everybody understands that. The death of a dog, a cat, a horse. Chickens have personalities. I know friends who have chickens. And when they've had to let go of a chicken or a rooster, it's been really hard. A tortoise. Letting go of a tortoise. Anything that is, has been part of the context of your life or has helped to define you or shape you and you've had to let go of, that is absolutely worth being conscious of and, and mourning if needed, grieving if needed. What about the loss of a job? Maybe a cherished friendship, not necessarily a romantic one, but one that has helped midwife the person you are today. Loss of things, yeah, yeah, loss of things. Um, any loss that upsets or shifts the context of your life or who you are is worthy of paying attention to and acknowledging with honor and integrity. You know, when grief isn't acknowledged, it can go sideways. It goes sideways and it can become anger. It can become something that will distract you and keep you from being fully present with the people you, people you love. It can keep you from being mindful and it can keep you from being just thoroughly engaged with life as you are living it. So when we don't pay attention, and it's the same thing as what we teach here, then we have, when we have a belief that's buried, that we haven't acknowledged, that perhaps is not life-affirming, that is not about our wholeness, that is not about the, the truth of our being, the divine truth of our being. If we don't begin to interrogate that belief and find out how it's affecting us and change that belief, then that belief can often sabotage us and can limit our experience of joy, our abundance, our health. So it's that same thing. When we don't fully honor what's going on around us, I remember that a friend of mine who married the man of her dreams years ago was so, so happy and couldn't understand why she got a really, really bad cold in the middle of the honeymoon. honeymoon. You know, how can this happen? And her mother-in-law, who's also a friend of mine, said, well, you know, it is a great life that you've moved into, but you also, there's some mourning and letting go of the life that you've moved from. And I, th I hadn't thought about that before. And I thought, that's really, really true. We don't just walk away and, and deny what has happened. I mean, many people do, but again, it's what has built us, it's, it's what has uh, created us and given us meaning and context. So, you know, this last how many months it's been has been filled with so much emotional stretching, right? I mean, these, the inner yoga that we have all had to do to be able to not just survive, but, but to feel like we are... <sighs> going to be okay and still connected with the people we love, that's some, that's some tough yoga. That's some mental yoga. That's emotional yoga. And those are stretches that are hard to warm up for, right? Those things can hurt. Um, even those of us who haven't lost friends or family still might want to consciously allow for the loss of old ways, old habits, old traditions, only two years old, but um, being able to, to hug people, shake hands with strangers, things like that. And I know that we will return to a place of wholeness. I'm absolutely certain of it. And yet, it'll be with a different awareness. We will be different people. We will be different individuals. I know we will be stronger. We will be more aware and I think more resilient. But in the meantime, there's some stuff that we have let go of. I know that some of you have had to attend memorials online, and that's pretty surreal, to not be in the room where stories are told and where hugs are given when love is shared. That's a hard thing to do. It might feel like that's not yet complete, and perhaps tonight might be a chance for you to be in your own room with that, to be in this room with that, with other people. 
Earlier tonight, I was on the phone with one of my girlfriends, and she lives in Chicago, and she's a singer and composer. Her name is Bukeka Scholes. She's this amazing talent. She's such an artist, and she wrote a song years ago that has resonated with me over and over. And as I was working on this service, it kept coming back to me, and it's called, I'll Light a Candle in Your Name. I'll Light a Candle in Your Name. And here's some of the lyrics. When it's time to take another step on the road that's been too long, and you find it hard to see things clearly because there's so much going on, in your time of need, I will hold you close to my heart, and whenever it's dark, I'll light a candle in your name. I'll light a candle in your name and shield it from the wind and rain. I'll wish upon a falling star that you are safe wherever you are. I'll say a prayer that you are blessed beyond appearances. I'll light a candle in your name. All it takes is one candle and there is light. And there is light. So you each have been given a card and a pen. And if you don't have them, please raise your hand so we can make sure that you do get them. So... Um, who needs to get, who needs, do we all have them? All right. So here's what I want you to do. <sighs> I'm going to invite you to take a moment and breathe deeply. Just be where your body is. Let your breath out. And then take a minute or two to be willing and to write down your losses. It might be just one loss. It might be a family member. It might be something from years ago, but just dive into that, drop down, and ask yourself, is there something that I want to bring light to? What would I like to bring light to? Honor whatever or whomever you have lost. Let your hand write the words. Your words may still be fraught with anger or sadness. And that's all normal. And here's the thing. You don't even have to be willing to let it go. You don't have to. I'm not going to make you. At this point, all we'd want to do is simply recognize and let your loss be held in light and peace. So take a moment and write that down. If you're in our Zoom world or our Facebook world, I invite you to do the same. Just be willing. And keep breathing as you do this. And all I said, as I said, all we want to do is simply recognize and let that loss be surrounded in light. Let it be surrounded in peace, wonderful peace, as Mary sang. So in a moment, when you're ready, I'm going to ask you to come forward with your card. Put your card on the table, on, on the altar, actually. We have created an altar. And light a candle in the name or the names of those whose lives you have said goodbye to or any other loss that's pulling on your heart. Take your time and be mindful about it. Now, you're free to take this candle home at the end of the service. In fact, I'm, I really would love for you to do that. When we're done here, come on up. We're, we're going to take a couple of pictures of the altar, but do take the candle home so that at any point during this next month, when you find yourself wanting light or wanting to remind yourself of this person or this thing or this, this beautiful, blessed, four-legged pet that you may have released, that you're able to call forth the light in them. Call forth the light in yourself. We want to light a candle in the name of those who have touched us. Light a candle in the name of yourself. Light a candle in the name or in the idea of that which you have said goodbye to. So as you leave the card on the table, I will, if you choose to leave it there, I will confidentially hold them and pray. I will pray for them. I will pray for you and know that you are immersed in, that you are saturated in peace, that you are saturated in the highest good of God, of love, of truth, and that you 
are restored to a place of really, really knowing yourself as the light. So again, throughout the holidays, whenever you feel a need to honor your loss, light a candle in their name. Light a candle in the name of remembrance and peace. You know, we are, you are in a safe place too. And we have practitioners here to pray with you. If you are needing support afterwards, you can also call in or you can email a prayer request. Tears are encouraged. They're sometimes a necessary part. In fact, for me, they're, a, they're absolutely vital to recovering my own remembrance of who and what we are. So Mary is going to sing while we are coming forward to light these candles. Take your time. It's a beautiful song. It's called Carry Me. And I'm going to come on down here, and I will hand you all some torches. And just come up when you are ready. There you go. Thank you. There is a river rolling to the sea. You will be with her for all eternity. But we that remain need you here again. So hold him in your memory and begin to make the shadows disappear. So let it start, my friend, let it start. Let the tears come rolling from your heart. And if you
When you need a light in the lonely night, carry me like a fire in your heart. Carry me like a fire in your heart. Carry me like a fire in your heart. So at the end of the night, I do invite you to come up here, blow out the candle, let it cool a little bit, please, so we don't have to do a forgiveness or healing service. And I would also like you to give us a chance, actually, we want to take some pictures because it really is beautiful. Let's pray. <sighs> Carry this love like a fire in your heart carrying this peace as light in our heart, knowing that just one step has been taken towards creating softness around something that might be calling for greater at attention, greater understanding. Whatever the need is, I know for us that the infinite flow of love is surrounding us and filling us not just as a fire in the heart, but as the healing arms of love, the healing arms, the balm of God. And I know that we are, we are wrapped in this love. We are embraced and we are held. And I know for each person here, that this light and all of the prayers connected with it, which will go on, will become as a tapestry, a woven tapestry of prayer to hold each and every person up, to hold them, to support them, to support each of us as we move forward in our lives, as we move into this season of light, allowing every light we see to remind us that right where we are, God is, all is well. That right where we are, light is. And we are beloved. So I know that light, the light of wholeness, is right now shining in every area where there has appeared to be a need for greater health. I know that the light of love is now shining as health. Where there has appeared to be a need for employment, that is truly, truly shining as employment, as right action. It is shining as abundance, as source, as supply, and as great, great celebration of relationships, of love, of harmony. For truly, in this place, we have shifted the vibration. We have shifted the vibration. And we have, in that one mind, created more love, more light, and a greater opening for truth. So I know that as we move into our lives and we speak words of peace for ourselves, we know and I know that I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. I invite you to say that with me. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. So it is with a wonderful sense of completion and gratitude that I release, I release my word into law, knowing it is so. And together we say, amen. Yes, I'm only here for
So now it is time for our affirmative giving, our grateful giving, our heartfelt, peace-based, anchored giving. I invite you to take your offering, hold it in your hand, hold it to your heart, and if you are doing our online giving or you're doing any of those other ideas or those protocols that we have created, just take this whole, know that in your hand you are holding this idea of infinite abundance, that you are holding this golden light of abundance. And I invite you to just take that idea, hold it to your heart, and say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Bless it. So I want to thank some people who have gotten us through this tonight. And, you know, we have this amazing digital ministry. There are our virtual people. Well, no, they're not virtual, but we have a virtual ministry. They're, they're flesh and blood. They're real. So our practitioner, and she's actually in the room, proving that she is flesh and blood, is Nicoletta Achim. And our Facebook Live support tonight has been Liz Racy. And our Zoom support was Lynn Romanowski, who hosted Alma Alvarez, also a host. Reverend Nadine has been working with everyone, too. Now, in the sanctuary, lights and sound, we've got Adam. We've had Colleen and Luana doing ushering and welcoming you. Uh, Doreen, Nikki, Brenda, and Blair. Is, no, Blair's not here. Well, he's, he's, he's virtual tonight are in charge of, of what has been going on in here. Uh, Mary Highland, you are just a goddess. You can reach her by emailing her at marhylc, that's marhylc at aol.com. And then Sam Krieger, I think you do one-arm push-ups to keep everything going, don't you? Because we all just keep leaning on you all the time, and you've been like, you get the perfect attendance award. Yeah, you really do. Thank you so much. And you get everything else, too. Pulpit support, Mary Catherine O'Hart. I am Reverend Sydney Steen. I am so grateful that you are here. Thank you. We have a couple of really brief announcements, and then we'll, we'll go out. Oh, but don't forget your candles. And, and if you left icons or pictures, make sure you take those with you, too. All right, Mary Catherine. Thank you again so much. They're not terribly brief, but anyhow. Um, thank you for everyone who was able to participate in Giving Tuesday. It was a really nice thing to find out on Facebook. 
And um, if you'd like to make further donations, please call our office at 818-762-7566, or you may go to nhcrs.org slash forward slash give, or text the word give to 818-457-3419. And Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service in person or on Zoom. So if you'd like prayer and you're on Facebook, just hop on over to Zoom and we'll be more than happy to pray with you. A Wednesday evening service with Reverend Sidney um, and med is at um, 6.50 p.m. and at 7 p.m. Uh, I'm sorry, meditation starts at 6.50 and service starts at 7. Our youth church will be open on Sunday at 9.45 a.m. for services, and youth of all ages are welcome. The 2022 Journey of the Heart pledge forms are available in your fo on the foyer and online. Our WIMS group holiday sing-along with the wonderful Mary Highland, and I believe she has a guest assistant with her Gilbert's going to be there on um, it's going to be at the women's group this Sunday after service starting at 11 30 a.m. and it's a fun wonderful time and we get to hear Mary sing again and Gilbert's not too shabby either so it's a lot of fun <laughs> our men's group will meet this Sunday in the Ernest Holmes room at 11 o'clock um, so this will be one in person our Christmas Giving Tree event. Thank you all for those who participated and practitioner Gail Pelote, who does such a fabulous job with this every year. And she will be collecting Target and Val Arte gift cards through December 5th. So um, the gift distribution will be on December 9th. So contact Gail if you have some cards you'd like to give and uh, if you'd like to participate in the gift distribution. If you have a smartphone, you might want to start writing some of these dates down so you'll remember them. I know I had to do it because we have a lot going on in this, this month. Our holiday celebration and Christmas carol sing-along will be Friday, December 10th at 7 p.m. Join Reverend Sidney and her talented guitar playing and singing husband, Charlie, for a fabulous holiday celebration and sing-along. And I love sing-alongs. Remember the old hootenannies? And so Good, and I have a hat to match mine this year. Yes, wear your holiday sweaters and show them off and join the fun. The evening will conclude with hot cider. Will it be spiced? Well, probably not. And Christmas cookies on the patio, so we will be able to celebrate afterwards. Our youth Christmas program will be on Sunday, December 12th in the sanctuary at 11.15 a.m. Join us and bring all the kids you know for a fun and festive event that will include singing carols, more singing, I love it, telling stories, and a visit from Santa, Mrs. Claus, and some of Santa's elves as well. We have an all new Christmas Eve candlelight service on Friday, December 24th at 7 p.m. And you may join us in person or on Zoom or on Facebook. And I particularly am very grateful because I will be out of town for the holidays and I will be able to join by Zoom and it also live and in person on Christmas Eve service, and it will be beautiful and include readings, singing, candle lighting. And we look forward to celebrating with you in whatever form you're able to join us. Our bookstore is open 30 minutes after the Sunday service, so please stop by. There's lots of, and remember, books make very good Christmas gifts. Our virtual pa Zoom patio is available before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. And our Zoom meditation is every morning, Monday through Saturday. You missed mine this morning. I was there. But I will be hosting tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. And I look forward to seeing your faces. And you may visit our website at nhcrs.org to obtain Zoom links and more information about our events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Because if you don't remember everything that I said, it's available online. All right. Thank you. Next week, my, whoops, this is where Doreen looks at me from across the room and goes like this when I have my mask on, which I just think make, she's telling me I look really good. So, um, next week, my talk is looking for a light in all the right places. So I hope you'll join us. Then the week after that is a clear and present manger. 
Anyway, let's, uh, let's do a bit of a closing prayer and get out of here, shall we? All right. <laughs> so we just simply once again turn inward, knowing that there is one presence, one life, one love, one mind flowing through us all, surrounding us, connecting us, both in and as God and with each other. So I know that in that we are loved and in that we are the joy of life made real, made vital, made vibrant. And that this celebration of God is taking place at every level throughout us and throughout our world. And that as we step out into that world, I am certain that we are a blessing in it. We, are, we bless ourselves and our families. And we are blessing all churches, all paths to God, all synagogues, all mosques, all ashrams. We bless every single bit of this because we know that this one power, this one presence is simply calling forth all of us to be that true self that we are the divine. And it is wonderful. So with gratitude, I release this word into law, into God's perfect law, knowing that all things are working together for good for all people. And right where we are, God is, all is well. And so it is, together we say, amen. to rooms now um, and the first persons that will go in are Jeffrey Paul and Mona okay does anybody want to pray with a practitioner if you could raise your hand that would be so appreciated or if you want to visit with somebody on, on a patio table Do you, do you want prayer? Mona and uh, Mona, Mona and Jeffrey are already oh. on the patio table, so now. And who else? Oh, Jim. Jim. Would you like okay. to be with a practitioner? Jim Remus? Okay, why don't you assign Mark to Jim? Very good. Krista and Laura, do you want to uh, unmute yourself and do some sharing? There you yes. go. Yes, it was a lovely wow. service. I, I had pictures of my mom and dad and sister and oh. had pictures of her parents and some good friends. It was really wonderful. It was. It was remarkable. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. for you two ladies. Are you feeling yeah. that peace in your little hearts? I'm and feeling the, love the, of the light. The light. <laughs> of course. I'm, yeah. I'm so glad you put that forth there, Missy Krista. Yeah. That's just beautiful. <laughs> did you want to did you like, want to visit with anybody this evening on a patio table? You social little butterflies? No? What else did you get from the service this evening? Trisha, is there something you'd like to uh, join in and, and share? that happened for you this evening? Uh, <clears throat> well, it's, uh, what I brought to the healing services, some of you may know, 